In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to free up your iPhone system storage, including that annoying other. Now, before I even get started, make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on, help me reach the 200,000 subscribers. We're getting so close. And without further ado, and also drop a like on this video, it's much appreciated. So first things first, you want to take it over to the settings, and you want to take it over to general, and you want to take it to iPhone storage. This is going to work for the iPad too as well. And as you can see, I have 256 gigabytes and I'm using 222 gigs. So yes, I need to free up some space and it gives you an idea on what's taking up the most space here. But with some people, you're going to have that system data taking up the most storage or AKA that other. So the other space on your iOS device means your system caches, such as your Siri voice files, your Safari caches, your browsing history, your iOS updates can mean something too. And that's basically all it is, just the caches. So that leads me to number one, you can clear out your Safari uh, caches and your history. So you take it over to the settings, Safari, and you're gonna see something that says clear history and website data. Now, before I even clear that, you can see exactly what's taking up the most space. So if you go into advanced and website data, it's gonna load up the caches. So this is like the build up cache and you can pinpoint exactly what you want to delete. All it is with caches. Next time you go into the site, it saves some information on your device. So next time you load it up, it's faster. You can see all sites and you can remove all website data and you can still keep the history intact on your iPhone. So reality, you can just remove all website data and it's going to tell you this will clear data that could be used for tracking, but it's also used by website to preserve login information and speed up browsing. The second thing, app caches such as Snapchat, TikTok, those apps are heavy into the caches and it's very easy to clear them. If you want to remove uh, app caches for Snapchat, you can do so. If you launch up the Snapchat app, you can tap on your profile in the top left corner and then you want to tap on the settings, the gears icon on the top right. And then you want to go all the way down until you see clear cache. So it is taking up 134 megabytes. You can clear your conversations. You can clear your search history. All this stuff is all about the caches. So we're going to clear the caches and it's going to let you know that your memories and your backups won't be deleted. So I'm going to clear that out and then it's going to close out the Snapchat. And when you launch it up, you should be good to go. Now, as for TikTok, pretty much same thing. I'm going to back out here. So you want to take it over to your profile, the profile on the bottom right, and you want to tap it over to the hamburger icon and you want to tap on settings and privacy. And then you want to go all the way where it says cache and uh, cellular data. So 334 megs, you can tap on clear cache and it's going to clear the cache right there. So it didn't give me no prompts or nothing. So that is a way to ease up the system storage. And if I go back, it's actually going to refresh. Um, so let's go into general and then we're going to go right here. So I saved a little bit of space, but none too crazy to write home about. Sometimes uh, TikTok can take up gigs and even Snapchat. So that could save significant amount of storage. And now if you take a look at your iPhone storage, you can still see we have some caches here. So Instagram's taking up three, a whopping three gigabytes. My mail client Spark is taking up over two gigabytes. What you can also do, you can offload the app and all it is is going to remove the app, but it's going to keep the data intact. So it's going to eliminate the need of you logging back in. So basically what that means is offloading the app. You're just removing the app size and you're keeping the data intact. So it might be an app that you have on your phone that you only use occasionally, but you don't necessarily need it on your device. And that could be very useful. You can even use it automatically as the recommendations here. <laughs> So you can offload unused app and it's going to use machine learning to identify what apps that you're not using and the, your phone is going to automatically delete the app, but it's going to give you a cloud icon next to that. So if I offload, let's say for example, so let's say I decide to offload Waze, I'm going to offload the app. So we're going to offload that and then it's going to give you the option to reinstall the app. But even better, if you take it over to the home screen, you're going to see this iCloud icon next to the app that you just offloaded. So all you do, you tap on it, it's going to download it, varies on your connection speed. But in this case, I'm connected to Wi-Fi, so it should download relatively fast. And then as soon as you tap on it, all the data and everything is back intact. Next thing, very simple, self-explanatory, delete any apps that you're not using. So go through this list, see what app that you're not going to use 
and you can save a ton of storage just like that. Pretty self-explanatory. And even when you get your iPhone, Apple has these apps pre-installed. GarageBand, iMovie, Keynote, Pages. I don't have it on my phone now, but those take up a ton of space. And the beauty thing with Apple apps, you can always go back to the App Store and you could be able to re-download it. So in this case, Keynote, I don't have it installed. You could search it up in the App Store and you can re-download it for free. Now, another thing too, keep your phone updated. Now, I do have an update. These Apple updates come out like pretty much every single week, I feel like. Um, so yeah, try to keep your phone updated because what that does, it kind of removes some caches on the system and it kind of rewrites the OS. So, um, so sometimes that can actually help free your storage. But ironically, you will need storage to actually update your phone. Let's say you're not interested of updating your phone just yet. So iOS 16 is pretty much around the corner. You might not want to update because maybe it's going to be a couple of glitches. iOS 16.0 might be the buggiest. So you can always delete the update and and don't even worry about waiting until Apple iron out the bugs. I know you guys see it. This iWater in 13 gigabytes for just the messages. Delete some of your old group conversations, especially the chats that you're no longer active in no more. You can delete them. So I recommend going through here, your settings, and see what exactly that you want to delete. So if you tap on photos, you can see what's taking up the most space from top to bottom, taking up the least space. Now, another killer, another killer, the photos. Eye watering, 144 gigabytes of photos. Yes, I know. So the photos app is like a totally different ball game. I would say more than likely, this is probably what's taking up the most space on most people's device. Check your recently deleted. Anything that you want to say, make sure you restore it. I always like to select it and delete all. And this is going to delete it off your device. And while you're at it, make sure you review some of these categories here. So you have Pro Trip, Panoramas. You even have Raw, ProRes, especially that ProRes. This is taking up the most space. But I'm actually shooting a day in a live video and I, you know, I have some video projects that I'm working on for the channel and same goes with raw photos. So and believe it or not, some of my thumbnails on this channel, I use my iPhone 13 pro and I shoot them in raw. It comes out nice and crispy. So, um, but when I'm done, I, I have a bad habit of just leaving it on my phone. It's funny. They don't even call it camera roll no more. They call it recents or albums. Now, another thing too, to help save the space on the photos you can use iCloud I'm still rocking out with the peasant five gigabytes of free iCloud storage I'm more of a, a physical man I like to keep all my photos on an external device I don't like messing around with the cloud too much but I do have iCloud photos enabled optimized iPhone storage enabled too as well but since my iCloud storage is full it can't back up all my photos this could help save me a bunch of a ton of storage because what's going to happen is it's going to optimize iPhone storage and what it's going to do is going to upload the photos to the cloud and it's going to give you a low res uh, preview of the photo on your iPhone. But it's going to clear up because literally it's picking it up from the cloud and it actually tells you right underneath it. If you're like me, you have like 100 gigabytes of photos, you might want to consider purchasing iCloud storage. But like I said, me personally, all you guys got to do. You airdrop it to your MacBook, you plug in an external device, and you have everything right at a hard drive, and you label it, and you put it somewhere safe. Because let's face it, iCloud storage can run out too. As an alternative, you can use Google Photos. So it's backing up all uh, just under 4,000 photos. So that is basically it. That is how you save a ton of storage on your iPhone. And this is going to work on the iPad. It goes without saying. I have my iPad mini here on the side. So if you guys found this one helpful, I appreciate it with a thumbs up. Make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on. Help me reach the 200,000 subscribers. And make sure you guys follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. And make sure you guys follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and on TikTok at Simply Pops. Until next time, guys, have a simple day. Wallpaper link will be down below. Peace.